Welcome to the Uncle Jim Effect Podcast. My name is Dennis Deloach, and I'm going to be your host. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. And I promise you, if you'll have an open mind and you'll stick with us, this podcast or series of discussions will absolutely help you get to wherever you want to get in life. The purpose of this podcast, why it was started, why we do what we do, is to help millions of people realize their God-given potential in life and then to magnify that potential once they discover it in the service of their families, their friends, neighbors, and communities, and make where they are a much better place. As we do that, our ultimate goal is to create a tsunami of hope that hopefully will just sweep over our area, our communities, our country, nation, and the world. So let's get started. Please uh, subscribe below. I think now we're approaching 25 or 30,000 subscribers. So excited about this. It is absolutely hitting a fever pitch. We've found a niche that people want. And uh, it's really exciting about helping me and you discover our God-given potential. Because once we do that and become in alignment with God or the universe, whatever you want to call it, once we get in alignment, it's like an engine that gets tuned. It now becomes easier to run and to do those things. And it seems at that point that coincidences or wonderful things start to happen. And I think we're starting to hit that. So let's get started. You can uh, find us also on Apple Podcast or Spotify. And please uh, share this with your family and friends as we try to create this tsunami of hope. So again, we said this is episode number 34. We're going to talk about today, the topic is habits. Good or bad habits equal success or failure. It literally is that simple. Uh, one of the great books written was The uh, Greatest Salesman in the World, and it was written by Og Mandino. And there's a quote in there that really talks a lot about habits. And if you uh, get the opportunity to read that book, it really is a good book. So this quote says, in truth, the only difference between those who have failed and those who, who have succeeded lies in the differences of their habits. Good habits are the key to all success. Bad habits are the unlocked door to failure. Isn't that an interesting concept? When you have bad habits, you're unlocking the door to failure and anything can step right in that door and create failure for you in an instant. And so good habits are the key to success. And that's really the only difference between anybody you can think of and yourself. If they've had success in life and you haven't in a specific area, if you examine their habits versus your habits, you'll see a direct contradiction in what you're doing versus what they're doing. We've all been there, we've all done it, and we're all guilty of that. So today what we're doing is we're not judging our past. We're saying, what do we need to do to move forward from this day forward? And that's the goal. Everything we do is not about judging our past. It's about helping aid our future. So a another quote that I really like, Confucius said, all people are the same, only their habits differ. And again, that fits in well with that first quote. So people are the same, abilities are roughly the same. Generally, it's the habits or what we do at the time we have over an extended period of time that make the difference in success or failure in anything you wanna talk about. So let's define habit. Uh, interesting definition of habit says an unusual way of behaving, something that a person does often in a regular, in repeated way, often regular and repeated. And it's an unusual way of behaving. So let's think about that for a minute. Is it unusual for people to get up at 4.30 in the morning to go work out, even if it's cold, rainy, or stormy outside? Absolutely. Is it unusual for us to want to eat broccoli versus a cupcake? Absolutely. So a habit and in this case, we're talking about successful habits. It's an unusual way of thinking. We simply, uh, in, in, as humans, we simply want to take the easy way out. And all this habit is, is an unusual way of thinking that occurs in an often regular and repeated way. 
So let's talk about that. So one of the best books I've ever written, written, I wish I had written it. One of the books I best books I've ever read was James Clear, his Atomic Habits book. Fantastic book. It breaks down and goes through the, the psychology of habits, breaks it into steps, talks about how do we create a good habit and simultaneously, how do you destroy a negative habit? Today, we're going to focus on how do we create a good habit. But I would recommend you get his book. Again, it's called Atomic Habits. And it's by James Clear. So he talks in that book about four laws of behavior change. And the wording is a little different. So stick with us as we try to go through that. So again, four laws of behavior change. And the first one we're going to talk about is called Q, C-U-E. And the, the tag phrase, tagline that goes with that is to make it obvious. So when you're looking to change your behavior, when you're looking to establish a new habit, you need to start with the Q or to make it obvious what you're going to do. It's ironically, one of the greatest challenges to changing habits is maintaining awareness of what we are actually doing. And he talks a lot in the book about saying, look, if I'm going to get up, at, if I'm going to start a habit of working out, he said, we need to get specific and say at 5 a.m., I'm going to wake up and I'm going to walk for two miles. And we need to be specific. It's not going to say, I'm going to set my alarm and I'll get up sometime and, and then I don't know what I'll do. I'll do something. So we have to actually make it obvious. We need to make it specific. It's got to be obvious and we need to shock our system. And the cue needs to be, make it obvious. In that case, it's specific. If it's a diet, it's going to be starting tomorrow. I'm going to not eat sugar. I'm going to, and whatever your issue might be, maybe it's chocolate, maybe it's Twinkies, whatever that is, be specific. I will limit my intake of Twinkies to four the first day. Wouldn't that be nice? Three, whatever it is, make it specific. This is actually why the consequences of bad habits can sneak up on us is because we, and we've all done it, but have you ever, see if this fits, have you ever said, you know, I know it's not good to eat cookies, but if I just have one or two of these, that's not going to be the end of the world. Uh, and, and that's probably a true statement. But then tomorrow when I say that's, you know, I'm just going to have two or three of these or I'm just going to miss working out one day, or I'm just going to not, uh, in business, I'm not going to follow through on a specific uh, accountability that I have for that person. I'm going to let them slide. They didn't report their numbers just this one week. I'll let that slide. That's how the consequences of bad habits sneak up on us, is we do not have exact expectations outlined, and we do not follow through we allow simple things to sneak by. So make it obvious. We want to make sure on the first step of that behavior change, uh, again, it's called Q. We want to make sure that we make it obvious. And then we want to be aware of exactly what it is we want to change and what we want that behavior to look like. The second step in the four laws of behavioral change or to set and establish positive habits in your life is called craving. And we need to make it attractive. The, the step we do, uh, the second step of creating a habit is we need to make it attractive. In the brain, the center that gives you reward when you complete something, say example, you say, I want to lose 20 pounds and you lose that 20 pounds, you get on the scale and that success you feel, that center of your brain or when you say, I'm going to run a marathon and you take six months to train and the finish line of that marathon, when all of that expectation is realized, that part of your brain, do you know that it's the exact same uh, center and the exact same signal and the exact same feeling you get in anticipating a reward compared to receiving the reward? So in your mind, as you say, I am going to cross that finish line. I am going to lose 25 pounds. I am going to accomplish this in business. That 
feeling you get in your brain is the exact same. The brain doesn't know the difference whether you've accomplished it or you're talking about it. So we need to make it attractive and we need to, that, that's why they talk a lot about visualization or positive affirmation is if you can start to visualize it in your mind, lots of factors come into play. One of which is what we're talking about here, which is my mind starts to process that reward and I start to feel it and it creates momentum in that direction. So the exact same reward system in the brain is activated whether we anticipate the reward or actually experience the reward. So that is a big key. So remember that as we do that. Uh, the third step in the four laws of behavior change is called response. And the response, what they're talking about there is to make it easy, right? We cannot make having a new habit difficult. We're going to make it easy. How many of you slash me have spent hours, days, or months even planning on getting started to accomplish something big? You draw it up on paper six or 12 times. You buy all the workout clothes. You buy six business books. You learn these things in anticipation or preparation to get to this goal. So this might be one of the most critical steps of these four laws. And it's law number three, response, make it easy. Uh, it is simple yet profound that focus, that we need to focus on taking action, not planning. Let me say that again. We need to focus on taking action, not planning. What does that look like? So if you literally sat down and said, I want to start a workout program, I'm going to start tomorrow. And so I need to go to the store and I need to buy all this workout gear and I need to buy new shoes and I need to buy a book and I need to get a podcast. I need to get new headphones. I need to do all these things. And I'm going to, buy a new alarm clock. I'm going to do all these things to set it up and do it. Literally, what you should have done is said, you know, I'm going to start, I'm going to, I'm going to lose 20 pounds. I'm going to get up right now and I'm going to go for a walk. I'm just going to walk down to the end of the block and back. That's the start. Focus on taking action, not planning. It is so much better to have an average plan implemented than it is to have a perfect plan never executed. So it is always better to have an average plan that you start because along the way you can make it better. And you'll eventually get to the point where you'll have an excellent plan that you can implement. But the key is brevity, doing it quick. Uh, James Clear in his book, Atomic Habits, talks about a two minute rule. And he says, when you start a new habit, it should take less than two minutes to do. And he gives a bunch of examples. Again, that two-minute rule. When you start a new habit, it should like take less than two minutes to do. For example, he says, if you want to run three miles, don't talk about running three miles, setting the alarm clock, getting up, getting dressed, doing these things, running, oh, now it's raining, what do I do? He said, focus on saying, I need to tie my running shoes. That's it. So when you wake up, get your running shoes on, tie them. That's the signal. Now that you have running shoes on, just get up and go run. Uh, it talked about in his book, the story of this lady who had, I guess, worked out for 30 or 40 years straight. She'd have to get up early in the morning, get ready. She lived in, I forgot, some 30th floor of some high rise. She'd have to take the elevator all the way down, come out, hail a cab and do this. But her focus every morning was to get up and go work out and take a taxi ride for 20 or 30 minutes to get to the gym. It was, I need to get in that taxi every morning at 545. That was her goal. Well, her goal wasn't to go, I need to go sweat, work out and, uh, for two hours. It was, I need to be in that taxi cab at 545. And so see how that applies to whatever it, goal or habits you want to create. What is your taxi moment? What is it you need to do? And whether, and it's different for everybody. We've all got it, but whatever triggers you, that's what you need to do. And then the fourth and final law of behavior change uh, to create a habit is the reward. 
and it's got to be make it satisfying. So the first three laws that we talked about increase the odds that the behavior will be performed this time. So when we have a cue or to make it obvious to state exactly what we're going to do, when we have a craving or to make it attractive to activate that reward system in our brain that this is going to be great when I lose these 20 pounds, when I have a response or make it easy and have a two-minute rule to do that, those first three laws of behavior change make it highly probable that we will perform this behavior this time. This fourth law deals with increasing odds that a behavior will be performed next time or again. And so it's kind of easy to do something once, but this is what we need to do if we want to make that behavior, which is the key to success of a new habit over and over and over again. And so by making it satisfying, that's what we'll do. So as I get up, as I run, you know, that is not going to be satisfying for someone like me who hasn't done it or in business or losing weight or getting in shape, whatever it is, it is not going to be satisfying. In fact, it could be downright painful. So to create the reward, that is what is going to make it happen again and again and again. And we do know through lots and lots of psychological studies, what is immediately rewarded is repeated. And what is immediately punished is stopped. And so we have to reward ourselves every time we do something good. And so maybe you're a type of person that always points out the negative things in your life. And maybe you do need to lose a little bit of weight, or maybe you do need to get in a little better shape, or maybe you do need to do a little better in business. That is okay, but you have to have the ability. And remember now, we're saying that if you want to repeat this habit, which we all do, this is the key part. And it's also the hardest. We need to take time, step aside and say, you know what? I haven't worked out for 30 years, but you know what? I did work out today and I didn't, although I only went a quarter mile, that's a quarter mile that I've gone in 30 years or what fill in the blank. So we have to be able to pat yourself on the back to give yourself a reward. If you want to repeat the procedure, you can't say, well, geez, I only went a quarter mile. I saw people out there running past me right and left and they go 10 miles and I only went this and I didn't do that. And this is terrible. Do you think you're going to get up and do that again? Of course not. So the key to the fourth law of creating a habit is the reward part. That's also the key to repeating the process and habit over and over again. Uh, Jim Rome says, and he, he's a great philosopher, but he says, motivation is what gets you started. Habit is what keeps you going. Anybody can be motivated for a, a minute, an hour, a day, right? But it's motivation and discipline that keep you going. That is key to this process. So in, in review, whatever it is in life that you're trying to change the results in, realize that the way the only way to change results, whether it's to change your health, to change your weight, to change your financial situation, to improve your knowledge, to do better in business, to get your savings account bigger, anything and everything you can do, it is surrounded and revolves around creating new effective habits. The process we've talked about today talks about how you do that. We know that specifically good habits lead to success and bad habits lead to failure. So I want to close with this quote, and it comes out of, again, The Greatest Salesman in the World book by Og Mandino. And it's a little long, but I kind of want to read that because it really sums things up. It says, soon actions and reactions will become easy to perform. 
for any act which you practice becomes easy. Thus, a new and good habit is born, for when an act becomes easy, through constant repetition, it becomes a pleasure to perform. And if it is a pleasure to perform, it is man's nature to perform it often. When I perform it often, it becomes a habit, and I become its slave since it is a good habit. We all want to become good slaves to a good habit because the tremendous results come out of that. Thank you so much for your time. Go out and start this. Remember the two minute rule, whatever it is, it should only take you two minutes to get going. Remember to focus on taking action, not planning. After you're done taking action, you can plan on what you can do better tomorrow. But right now, take action, focus on that. All people are the same, only their habits are different. Different. What are you going to do about it? Thank you so much. Uh, until next time, we'll see you soon and get busy getting after it. Bye-bye.